Viewer Joe V. Thanks for the memories, Thundercloud. Live from ClickOrlando.com and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 4 p.m. Straight to breaking news on a small plane crash in Volusia County that sent two people to the hospital. The Volusia Sheriff's Office shared this photo of the wreckage. It's in the area off Lake Molly Avenue near DeLand. We're told witnesses reported it just about an hour ago. The FAA has already been notified and we will let you know as more details come in. But first, those afternoon storms are on the horizon. This is News 6 at 4. I'm Julie Broughton. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Bell. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. Let's get straight to a live look at areas across central Florida, inland from Mount Dora to the coast of Daytona Beach. Chief Meteorologist Tom Searles is pinpointing when the radar will really start to light up down tonight. Tom? You know what, Ginger? Those cameras are lying to you because you look at those, you're like, there are it's no fine. storms anywhere, but take a look at this. We've got big storms through Flagler County. Look at Flagler Beach. You've got rain just inland right across I-95 to Bedell. Big time rain right along Highway 1. Palm Coast getting rocked with big showers and even some lightning strikes here within the last 15 minutes or so. So all of a sudden, boom, this is rolling back toward you there along the East Coast. Crescent City all the way down to Pearson. Getting some rain in Pearson along Highway 17, and the lake is going to pick up a big shot of rain here as this rolls right over top of the lake. Now, as I put this entire viewing area together, not much happening from Orlando, from Deltona to Apopka to downtown Orlando. You get to the south side of Osceola County. We've got big rain right along the county line, sort of blowing up and hanging out right in place. So what does this mean for the evening? Well, if you're in Orlando right now, we're just burning up. Not had a single drop of rain. Light Orlando delivering Hope Camera temperature reading is 93 degrees with a heat index of 100 it's tough to be working outside. I'll be right back to pinpoint more of those showers. We'll check out the tropics and talk about the heat in the seven day forecast. Tom, thank you. Also developing up for dangerous moments at this Brevard County apartment complex. Police say a man holed up inside opened fire on them, prompting officers to shoot back. The situation was at one point believed to be an active shooter situation, prompting closures around the Pentagon Garden apartment complex. That's along West New Haven Avenue in Melbourne. News 6's James Barbero has the latest. This was very much a developing story, and we brought updates to you as they came in. Get breaking news alerts right to your phone. Like today's situation, download the free News 6 app by searching WKMG in your app store. Breaking news, a draft opinion from a major Supreme Court case on abortion appears to have been briefly posted on the high court's website hours after it handed out other rulings for the day. CBS News' chief legal correspondent Jan Crawford has the breakdown on what it revealed. As for the other rulings released earlier today, justices ruled a group of social media users, along with the states of Louisiana and Missouri, did not have the right to sue over the Biden administration's contact with social media platforms during the coronavirus pandemic and 2020 election season. The case stemmed from the federal government's efforts to remove content it said was misinformation. Extra law enforcement will be on a high school campus for summer session after the district says a student brought a weapon onto that campus. It has happened at Seminole High School today. The district sent a letter to parents saying they received a tip about the possible weapon and later found it in the student's backpack. The letter stated the student was taken into custody by law enforcement. We've since learned the 16-year-old is facing two concealed weapons charges along with more officers. The district also said it plans to have a weapons detection canine officer on campus. A really scary sight in Marion County this morning after a school bus crashed into a home. Troopers say the bus was headed down Marion Oaks Trail near 31st Avenue Road when a pickup truck blew through a stop sign. According to Florida Highway Patrol, the truck crashed into the right side of the bus, causing it to run off the road into a home. The 61-year-old bus driver was hurt but is expected to be okay. The crash remains under investigation. An Orlando amusement park just issued a chaperone policy in anticipation for big crowds ahead of the 4th of July. Fun Spot America says anyone under 21 years old must be accompanied by an adult 21 or older. New 60's Izzy Castro breaks down the new requirements. And we want to know what you think. How old can children go out unsupervised? We do have a poll. I mean, oh, that's, oh, four to six years old. Okay, oh. what? <laughs> 
<laughs> Is that what they do in Japan? Is? They have those kids who go right I don't know what exactly this okay. is showing us. Um, <laughs> not but, four to six years old. That's not okay. correct. Okay, so apparently uh, most people say that the average age where people should be allowed to go out on their own is 13 to 15 years old. Let us know what you think inside the story. I mean, I mean it also depends on the child, right. too. There are a lot of responsible 16-year-olds and irresponsible 21-year-olds. Yeah, I have a 14-year-old, and I don't know that I'd send her to an amusement park with friends without, yeah. a, without right. a parent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they served Central Florida for decades. Now they're closed. Rising prices are forcing a long list of family-owned restaurants to shut down. Coming up, we'll map out just how many locally owned eateries serve their final meal in 2024. But first, if the kids are already bored this summer, our new Six Insider Guide has a look at a new program that is sure to get their attention. You're watching News 6 at 4, getting results. We'll be right back. And during the break, we are streaming live on Facebook. Search Lisa Bell News on Facebook right now. News 6 Insider is sponsored by Orange County Library System. It's really about getting the truth, trying to dig down and figure out how this story impacts you. These stories matter, not just to us, but to the entire community. We want to make sure you have everything you need to know, that we answer all of your questions. Now we're breaking down the whole story, what matters to you, and getting the answers you want. Because that's what you need to know before you go to bed. News 6 at 11. Discover the magic of color at Crayola Experience, Orlando's most colorful hands-on family attraction. Live with Lisa Bell, Julie Broughton, Ginger Gadsden, and Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. You're watching WKMG, getting results at 4 p.m. If you're looking for something to keep your kids entertained this summer, there's a new program that'll get them passport stamps close to home. Morning anchor and insider guy Crystal Moyer has more on how a visit to some local attractions will keep students entertained and learning over the break. That I is a, a great passport. idea. Oh Absolutely. My gosh. So Little cool. Nolan is so cute. Yeah, he's he got his first one. Real. I mean, you give six-year-old Ginger, because I'm so competitive, the opportunity to get stamps mm -hmm. on a passport. Oh, I'm yeah. getting every... Two Everyone. of your favorite things, yeah. stamps and passports. So. <laughs> it's a win-win. Yeah. You know me so well. <laughs> Don't forget, it is free to be an insider. Just head to clickorlando.com slash insider to sign up. Well, it's one of those weather phenomena that you just cannot look away from. Look at this, Tom. Uh, this is video from Ooh. the Florida Panhandle. It is of a water spout swirling there. Thankfully, the funnel stayed out at sea, but the wind was picking up quite a bit on the Cape out there. I know you say you always wanted to see one of those in person. I don't yep. think you have. Never have. This is as close as I'd like to get, but look mm -hmm. at that thing. That looks pretty yep. wicked. Mm -hmm. I'm staring at it. Yeah. Sitting here in my studio, never seen one in person. Wow. Have you? No. I have not. I don't think so. Mm -mm. Wow, aren't we just a bunch? We've all been weather people at one time or the other, and we've never seen it. So sheltered. We're just a bunch of losers. <laughs> Take a look wow. at this. Here's Palm Coast, big oh, time. Oh, yes. Speak for myself. Is that what you said? Play with me. I'm almost done here. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Here's Palm Coast. Heavy rain coming down right along Old Kings Road near his 95. Pouring rain in Palm Coast all the way down just outside of Beverly Beach. A few lightning strikes here on Beverly Beach, and it's about to rain right on top of you in Flagler Beach if you're watching from Flagler County. Bunnell's already picked up the heavier rain. It has sagged a little farther to the east from you. In Daytona Beach, you just saw the camera a few moments ago. It's great looking, but scattered showers are about to collapse this way right toward you there in Ormond Beach. I'll put the entire viewing area together on at the same time. We'll come back into Orange County here. We have rain just outside of Orlando between Winter Park and Lockhart. Rain right along the 441. Highway 17 getting rain down there and into Osceola County. Just on top of some of the folks in St. Cloud, we are getting scattered showers right now. Here's the last hour of Radar Echo, so you can see how this is going. East Coast Sea Breeze is right here. This is going to run right into it, and big explosive storms will continue to file in right up and down that collision boundary. Weather story, okay, heat index has passed 102 up to 108 tomorrow. Scattered heavy rain showers as we roll through the next 24 to 48, even next seven days. And in the tropics, we have a couple of areas to watch. This one is no threat coming into the Caribbean this way. That one bears a lot of watching. Now, it's way, way, way out there, like, you know, 10 days away, eight days away. But in the next week, it has a 40% shot 
of becoming something. It's going to have to battle all the Saharan dust, which will arrive this weekend and play havoc with our sunset. It's going to make them look really pretty. Also influences some of your air quality. So be ready for that. Temperature will be the big star of the show for the next few days, though. Look at these heat index numbers. They're wicked. Currently in downtown Orlando on the light Orlando delivering Hope Cam, it's 93 because we've had no rain. At the port, 89, and in Daytona Beach, 90, with a heat index of 102. A plethora of 90-plus degree readings, wind support coming in from the south and the east, and you don't see much relief coming on outside of our rain. Colliding sea breeze, boom, big storms right there in Orange County by 7 o'clock, and then by 8, we start to calm it back down. Through the day tomorrow, the West Coast Sea Breeze gets the jump, Line of activity in here for the afternoon hours. And then as we roll into Friday, it's it's more the same. Low tonight, 70s all over. Right here in Orlando, we're calling that low 78. Here is tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by Freedom Health Medicare Advantage Plans. Hi, tomorrow into the 90s again. Rain chances are 60% for the next several days. And the daytime high is out of control. Up to 96 on Saturday and 95 on Sunday. Tom, thank you. Dozens of family-owned restaurants beloved for years have closed permanently in Central Florida. Coming up after the break, we'll go through some of the most popular restaurants that have said goodbye so far in 2024. You're watching News 6 at 4, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. News 6, the city of Orlando and attorney Dan Newland want to invite you to watch the News 6 July 4th fireworks special. It all kicks off at 8 p.m., honoring those on the front lines of our Central Florida community. Then sit back with the family and enjoy the brilliant fireworks show at home as we proudly present the Orlando Lake Eola fireworks live. News 6 presents fireworks at the fountain, celebrating a city of heroes. July 4th, starting at 8 p.m., sponsored by attorney Dan Newland. If it seems like you've heard about a lot of local restaurants closing lately, it's not just your imagination. Here are just some of the family-owned eateries that have permanently closed over the past few months. Those include the Black Rooster Taqueria on Curry Ford Road in Orlando, Buca de Beppo in Maitland, and Garden Bistro in Thornton Park, which closes at the end of the month. Over on the coast, Frankie's Wings and Things closed their Melbourne restaurant after 34 years in business along Wickham Road. Wagon Wheel Pizza in Palm Bay was open for 40 years until they closed down last month. And the beloved Ormond Beach staple, Delcato's Pizza and Italian Restaurant, shut down earlier this year. Now, many owners pointed to rising food and rent prices or leases expiring as reasons for closing. Now, if you'd like to see that full list, check it out on Click Orlando. Dot com. It's always just heartbreaking, especially yes. when it's one of your favorite mm -hmm. go-to yeah, places. Yeah. I mean, some of those restaurants, they feel like your family. Of course, yeah. and they know when you come in the door. Right, you know? yeah. So. Well, a Florida story making headlines today surrounds a 20-year-old accused of traveling across the country to kill a rival online gamer. Still ahead, the sheriff explains how he was able to track down the victim and get inside his home in the middle of the night. Then, all new at 5. Did you get a notice about getting a new water bill? I'm Catherine Silver here in Sanford, where the city is updating all of their old meters with new ones. They say it will be more helpful, but it could also come with some headaches. We'll explain what it means for your bill. You're watching News 6. More news and weather after the break. Roofclaim.com, your easiest roof ever. Live from ClickOrlando.com and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 430. Still ahead, an online gamer now facing an attempted murder charge. This is a weird one. Some things make you say, hmm. Some things you just can't make up. The flight to Florida that led to a disturbing attack on another player. That's coming up. But first, the clock is ticking. There are now just six months left before the statewide deadline for condo buildings to get their mandatory engineering assessments done. And it's coming at a big price for some homeowners. Glad you're with us. I'm Julie Broughton. I'm Lisa Bell. This is News 6 at 430, getting results. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. We begin, though, with a live look from our light Orlando camera over downtown Orlando. We're keeping a close eye on some storms. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is pinpointing what's on the radar tonight. Tom. You can see a little bit of rain there in the distance. 
distance. It didn't look too ominous, though, because it's not rocking and rolling really in Orlando. We've got some rain. Heaviest scattered showers and lightning is all south of Orlando or up here around the area to the north from Pearson all the way up right across the county line. The zone I'm watching the most, though, is over here. Palm Coast to Flagler Beach. Kaboom! Big lightning strikes ongoing. Let's put things into motion here. Here's the last hour of radar echoes. You see as this is approaching the coast, all of a sudden the lightning breaks out and really, really rocks it. Down to the south, Ormond Beach, right along the county line here. Here's Highway 1. This is pushing right on top of you. Holly Hill, it looks like the piece of energy behind you here to the west just fell apart. So it looks like this is going to go just to the north. And farther down the strip, things dry out the farther to the south you go. Until you get into the Altamont Springs, Orlando area. A couple of things going on. All of this is pushing in from the west. And there's the East Coast Sea Breeze right there. So in this zone, in the next 15, 20, 30 minutes, this is going to zipper in and fill up. And all these scattered showers and lightning strikes you're seeing from south of Kissimmee, right on top of St. Cloud, are going to boom, fill in that zone. And heaven knows we need rain. Look at the temperature trend coming up. If it doesn't rain, it gets blasting hot before the showers show up. 94, the daytime high tomorrow. 96 on Saturday, 95 on Sunday. And look at the heat index numbers. They're wicked. We're talking about heat index, real field temps of 107 coming your way by Saturday and 107 for Sunday as well. I'll be right back. We'll do another radar tour, talk about where the big storms are, what lies ahead for the night tonight, and then the pinpoint hour-by-hour hour forecast for tomorrow. See you there. All right, Tom, thank you. Now to the deadline for condo buildings to get their mandatory engineering assessments done. These assessments became law following the collapse of the Surfside condo in South Florida back in 2021. Now, any building more than three stories tall and 30 years old has to have them done. In Volusia County, this is costing more than 100,000 bucks per condo owner at one building. New 6's Molly Reed has their story. Okay, wow. I thought I made a mistake in reading that intro. Yeah, I hoped you had. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that, that teacher. Yes, and your heart just goes Gosh. out to people like that. Yeah. Obviously, there's, I imagine, a lot of people who are retired, living on a fixed income. Well, and Molly don't have informed me. the guy for the first time. He didn't even know. Yeah, and that's a lot of money. Yeah, all at that once, makes especially. my stomach hurt just yeah. to think about getting that notice. Per mm -hmm. unit. It's a I, lot of money. I'm yeah. still, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm having a hard time understanding and accepting <laughs> what's going no, on. That's so, right. Yeah. Well, UCF is cutting the hours people can protest on campus. The changes come after weeks of demonstrations at colleges across the country over the war between Israel and Hamas. Yesterday, the Board of Trustees approved shortening the time from 8 in the morning till 8 at night instead of 10 p.m. Demonstrators can also last, demonstrations can also last no longer than five. Five days. This project started more than a year ago and was unfortunately delayed. We do strive to review our regulations on a five-year cycle. Now, while the board says the changes were already planned, critics say it's targeting pro-Palestinian protesters. Other schools have approved similar changes to their policies. Last week, FSU banned tents and blocking entrances into buildings. UCF's camping ban does have exceptions for football games and other athletic events. Well, the man at the center of one of the biggest releases of government secrets in U.S. history is officially free today. This is video of Julian Assange returning to his native Australia earlier this morning. The WikiLeaks founder pleaded guilty to a single felony charge related to the Espionage Act. Sentenced to 62 months, free on time served, ending more than a decade of U.S. efforts to prosecute him for leaking classified information about the Iraq and Afghan wars. His wife and legal team spoke after his plea. The fact is that this case is an attack on journalism. It's an attack on the public's right to know. Julian should never have spent a single day in prison. The U.S. government, however, said he put national security at risk. But in recent months, President Biden alluded to a possible deal that had been pushed by Australian officials. A disturbing arrest. An online gamer accused of flying more than 1,000 miles to Florida to carry out an attack on another player. Ben Ryan reports how the victim's dad managed to help his son in a case that even has the sheriff shocked. 
Moonshine has a storied history in Florida, but it's never been done quite like this. Distilling cane sugar and natural spring water, this Florida moonshine packs a punch. Coming up, the distillery now selling flavors from around the world right here in Orlando. Tom. Take a look at radar this go around. Heavy storms up here around Palm Coast and some pretty decent lightning ongoing now from Orlando all the way down to Kissimmee, St. Cloud and beyond. I'll be back. We'll do a radar tour on that stuff. Then we'll check out the tropics in the next seven days. You're watching News 6 at 4.30, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is sponsored by your Central Florida Honda dealers. Here's what's happening on ClickOrlando.com. Is it legal to strip while steering? Learn the rules of the road. Secret tunnels beneath Central Florida? Uncover these mysterious locations. Summer is here. Check out the best beach gears tested and rated by Consumer Reports. Plus, did you know Florida has an alligator census? Discover what waterways are crawling with the most gators. Ooh, all this and more at ClickOrlando.com. Bell, Julie Broughton, Ginger Gadsden, and Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. You're watching WKMG, getting results at 4 p.m. Back to that breaking news on a plane crash in Volusia County. Two people were hospitalized. The Volusia County Sheriff's Office shared this photo of the wreckage. It happened in the area off Lake Molly Avenue near DeLand. Sky 6 is headed to the scene. And we are tracking some rain on the radar right now. Drivers are dodging storms for the drive home. Here's a live look at the 528 near the Orlando International Airport. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell is standing by. And Tom, there is plenty of rain to track on the radar right now. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot to look at. If you're watching from over in Flagler County, you're getting pummeled in Flagler Beach. Big time rain, maybe some small hailstones across this little piece of energy right here down to the county line. See, the activity did make it into Ormond Beach and a touch of light rain falling right now on the north side of Holly Hill. Sorry, guys, big, big rain just to the north of you and not much rain south of there into Daytona Beach, not getting any rain at all. Daytona Beach Shores not getting any rain. Henry Riddle not getting any rain. Put the whole viewing area together at the same time. East Coast Seabreeze rolled in real quick. Oh, no. There it is, rolling right in, running headlong into this, so these are going to continue to fire up here in the next few minutes. Right now, downtown Orlando, 88 degrees on the light. Orlando delivering Hope Camera with wind from the north at 9 miles per hour. Temperatures where you are. 89 in Gainesville, 93 in Leesburg and Claremont with no rain at all. This temp of Kissimmee, that's going to drop at the top of the hour because of all the additional showers that are happening right now. High pressure basically in control, so the sea breezes dictate where it rains, where it does not. Tonight, they wrap up by around... 8 o'clock, 9, I think we'll be done. Then tomorrow, much of the big activity pops again east of Orlando. So those of you on the east coast that didn't get rain the last few days, you're getting it in buckets now and should again tomorrow. For tonight, we're talking about overnight lows in most spots, dropping into the 70s. 76 will do it in Sanford, 76 in Daytona Beach, and 78 in Orlando. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by the Flooring Center. Rain chance tomorrow, 60%, and check out the week ahead. That 60 percentile is with us for several days all the way through the weekend. Tom, thank you. Plenty of new Florida laws have been passed over the last two years, but there's one that probably didn't make it onto your radar. Yeah, the state relaxed its craft distilling laws, ushering a new wave of home distilleries, which takes us to our latest episode of Florida Foodie. Lisa? Yeah, Mike Weber and Steve Nichols did not originally plan to become moonshiners, but as my co-host Candace Campos found out, they learned the trade and opened shop here in Orlando. Here now is Lisa Bell and Candace Campos with Florida Foodie. Sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. Some of those, so much. Yeah, some of those flavors sound delicious. Well, my throat is burning just listening to them talk <laughs> about it. Have you ever tried moonshine? I don't think the legit moonshine, but yeah. I've had a little before. Yeah. 
it, it's very um, hot. Yeah, I've only had gasoline flavored moonshine really? in the mountains. Uh, not not yeah. really. That's just what it tastes. This is many years <laughs> I've ago. I've had apple pie um, moonshine apple in Gatlinburg. It? Amazing. That yeah, That's not it's what I dangerous because it's so tasty. Yeah, I think you yeah. got to have a flavor though to make it right? taste yeah. good. Yeah. I don't think what I had was legal. <laughs> well, you can check out the full episode right now. It's on the new Six Plus app for your smart TV, or you can listen wherever you get your podcasts. It was in a milk jug. <laughs> <laughs> News 6 at 5 is up next. Anchor Matt Austin is here with What's Ahead. Julie, it sounds like you were in one of those moonshine reality <laughs> shows or something. Was, but changes yeah. if you plan to vote by mail, what you need to do again, and the deadline to get it all done. Plus, the number on your water bill could look different. It's all because leaders are replacing thousands of meters, the new tech promising accurate results. And scary moments on the road after a school bus crashes into a house. Troopers say another driver caused all of this. What went wrong at the intersection?